The Challenge of the Yukon. It's King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the North Country, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the greedy race for riches. Now back to the days of the gold rush, when Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King battled through storm and snow to preserve law and order as they met the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police walked back to the cabin with young Phil Williams after the funeral of Phil's father. The cabin seemed lonely and deserted and was filled with the stale tobacco smoke of the prospectors who had helped Phil with the final rites of the funeral. The sergeant's big lead dog was at his side and whined as they entered the room that still retained the scent of death. Lie down, King. No, I don't blame him for whining. This cabin is the gloomiest place in the world. Now, now sit down, Sergeant. All right, Phil. I uh, can't stay very long. Just wondered if you'd made any plans about your future. Thought maybe I could help you. Yes, I have, Sergeant. I'm, I'm leaving Dawson. Huh? <laughs> Dad's claim isn't any good. If he hadn't been sick, I'd have left long ago. Selling the cabin and going up the Klondike River with Steve Randall. Steve Randall? But Phil, Steve's bad medicine. What made you decide to do that? Oh, Steve's all right. Now and then he gets into a little trouble, but... Oh. Just because he has a lot of energy and a quick temper. We get along fine. I had an idea that I thought might interest you, but maybe it won't. What was it, Sergeant? Well, I thought you might be interested in joining the Northwest Mounted Police. Me? Be a Mounted, you mean? Yes, I'd be glad to recommend you. Of course, it's not an easy life, but it's exciting and interesting. Well, I never thought of it. I don't know anything about it. What would I have to do? Well, you'd have to go into training, of course. Here's a pamphlet that'll tell you about it, if you're interested. I couldn't go back on Steve now. I, I promised I'd go with him. Well, there's no rush about it. Take that along and read it. Maybe if your venture with Steve doesn't turn out the way you thought it would, you might try being a Molly. Thanks, Sergeant. I'll read this. Uh, Steve's quite optimistic about this prospecting oh. deal. It'd be wonderful if we'd strike gold. <laughs> I'd like to be rich. Money isn't everything, Phil. If you change your mind, let me know. I'm afraid it's all decided. Steve hasn't enough money to go by himself, but I'll get enough out of selling the cabin to help grub stake us, added to what Steve has. He knows the country well, too, and thinks he has a line of good claim if we can get up that far. Oh? Uh -huh. Where is it? I don't know exactly. It's on the Klondike River somewhere. Steve spent a lot of time up there last year. I think it's near Kramer's Landing. That's the nearest trading post to it. Well, at least I'll see you once in a while. Kramer's Landing's in my territory. I patrol it. Good. I thought maybe I wouldn't see you again for a year or two. You and King are the ones I'll miss most after I leave. I'm sorry you decided to do this so quickly. I'm afraid I never liked Steve much. Well, lots of people don't. I think that dog of his makes him unpopular. Diablo's so big and ugly. He'll take a hand off anybody who gets too near him. That dog could be trained differently with the proper treatment. Sometimes the dog grows to be like his master. Oh, maybe that's Steve now. He said he'd come over. Well, I have to go anyway. Come on, King. Hello, Phil. You don't mind if Diablo comes in with me, do you? Uh, don't let him in, Steve. Uh, King is here. That's the dog of yours, Steve. Get back. Diablo! What did I say? Back! Back, boy! Down, I say! You! 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 you. Down! Gosh, I'm sorry. Diablo got past me before I could stop him. Come on, King. Outside. <laughs> Get out, King. <laughs> yeah, too bad we couldn't let him finish it. That would have made a good fight. If you want to have anything left of your dog, you'd better teach him some manners. You attack King before King even saw him. Diablo can take care of himself. He likes to fight. And I'd bet on him, even against that money of yours, Sergeant. I don't bet on a sure thing or I'd take you up on that. Well, Phil, I'll run along. I'll see you before I leave, won't I? Oh, Sure. It'll take me a few days to get everything settled. Thanks for everything, Sergeant. If you need me for anything, let me know. I will, thanks. Goodbye, Sergeant. Bye. Uh, did you tell him you were going away with me? Yeah. Anything wrong in that? Just that it ain't any of his business. Sergeant Preston's one of my best friends. Yeah? 
Did you tell them where we're going? Well, could I when I don't know myself? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's best not to say anything to anybody. Keep your business to yourself. I don't see what harm there can be in telling them. I told that. you I knew where we might strike gold, didn't I? Yes. Well, well, if you got a brain in your skull, you know that if people find out about it, they might follow us, don't you? Well, all right, Steve. Uh, I won't mention it to anyone again. I see that you don't. Now we got to make plans. When you sell this cabin, we'll buy a dog team and supplies. We should be ready to go in about a week if everything goes all right. Over a week had passed, and Steve and Phil drove their dog team over the trail north. It was almost dark one evening when they approached a small cabin near the river. It was far from any other sign of habitation, and even the trading post was back about five miles on the trail. As they came nearer to the cabin, Steve chuckled. <laughs> well, I got to hand it to myself. I didn't think I'd find this place as soon as this. It certainly is far away from everything. Well, look, Steve. Somebody's living there. There's a light. Oh, sure. It's old John Avery's cabin. He's living there. Oh. Well, then, then this isn't the gold claim you told me about. I suppose it's near here somewhere. You'll find all about it in good time. Oh, Diablo! There's an old man. You heard the dogs, I guess. Who is it? Hello, John. There's Steve. Steve Randall. You don't sound very cordial, Grandpa. But what are you doing back here? Just aiming to do a little prospecting, that's all. Well, ain't you going to invite us in? It's a friend of mine, Phil Williams, John Avery. Glad to know you, Mr. Avery. Hope we're not disturbing you too much. Howdy. Are, are you planning to stay here? <laughs> Certainly. Where will I unhit Diablo? He likes to stay in the cabin with Don't me. bring that ugly beast into my cabin. Now, John, that's no way to talk about Diablo. We may not like it. <laughs> Come on, Diablo. You're going inside with me, boy. Steve, uh... Why can't we camp somewhere instead of staying here? This cabin's too small for all of us and Diablo, too. It's big enough. Come on, Diablo. I get your carcass out of the way, John, before I let Diablo eat you for his supper. Steve, or... <laughs> Come on in where it's warm. If you'd rather we went somewhere else, Mr. Hey, Leary, this you would better go on in. As soon as you get warm, Phil, you better go out and feed the dogs and fix them for the night. That's Steve... Do you think we ought to stay here? I feel it. <laughs> yeah, don't let old John bother you. He's never offered to take anybody in with him. he would let you freeze first. I'd take lots of people in if they were the right kind of people. I don't consider you one of them. Now, is that the way to talk to an old friend? <laughs> oh, uh, I met your grandson in Dawson, John. Seems as if he couldn't stand your miserly ways. Yeah. He said he had to pry your fist loose for enough money to get back to the States and left you here alone. He didn't like to work at mining. I gave him the money to get out. <laughs> I bet it just about broke you out to part with it, too. And you were the richest claim in these parts. My claim ain't rich. Who, who told you that? I decided to help your grandson try and forget the days he spent rotting up here with you. I must have given him just a little too much to drink. It made his tongue wag something awful. Steve, I, I'd better go out and feed the dog. No, sure, go ahead. I thought maybe you were a little lonesome up here all alone, John. I've lived alone most of my life. I never get lonesome. Well, you won't get lonesome from now on. We're going to stay with you. What do you... What do you mean? I decided you needed a partner. You got more gold now than you could ever spend. Time you gave somebody else a chance. You get out of here now. <laughs> My dog doesn't like it when you threaten me. I'll show you. Don't go after that gun, John. Stop, I say. I'll get you out of here, dog or no dog. Oh. Sorry I had to shoot you, John. But it was either you or me. Steve, what happened? Who... Why, Steve, you... you shot the old man. Yeah, yeah, he threatened to kill me, and I had to shoot him. <laughs> Guess he's a little balmy. Well, he's... he's dead, Steve. Oh, no, that, that's too bad. I didn't mean to kill him. 
Guess I got a little excited. You seem pretty calm about it. Well, an accident is an accident. We better go back to trading post and report this right away so you won't get into trouble. Don't be a fool. That's how we would get into trouble. Nobody will know anything about it. What? Steve, you Now, can't... listen here. John never sees anybody. But twice a year, he goes to the trading post for supplies. He hasn't any neighbors who come to see him. How do you know so much about him? I was up in this neck of the woods last year. His grandson was here then. And now he's left to go back to the States. Nobody can find out about this unless we tell him. Steve, this isn't the claim you meant when you talked about coming up here, was it? And what if it was? You mean you planned to come up here because you knew old John was here alone and unprotected? Phil, why don't you smarten up? Here's a fortune lying right in your lap. And you're worrying about an old codger who didn't have more than a couple of years to live anyway. But, Steve, you, you can't get away with this. If we start working this claim, somebody's bound to see us and start investigating. Who said anything about working his claim? What, what, what else would you... I know old John has plenty of gold hidden in this place. And I know where it is. His grandson gave me plenty of information in Dawson. We're taking that gold and skipping. Steve, why did you get me in on this? You could have had all the gold for yourself. You know, I needed a dog team and supplies to get here. And another thing, I'm planning to hide out in the mountains for a while until all this blows over. I didn't want a chance traveling alone in the cold. I was pretty sure you'd be reasonable about it. I didn't know the plan included murder. Nobody's going to know it's murder. What? What do you mean? After we find the gold, we're going to burn this cabin with old John in it. Nobody will know what happened to him. Steve, why, it's awful. Now, listen, Phil. You're either playing along with me or not. I'm in this right now up to my ears, and one more killing won't matter too much. It's only fair to warn you there's another bullet in this gun. Why, why Steve, I, I didn't say anything about not playing along with you. It's just a shock, that's all. You didn't tell me what you planned. Oh, yeah. Hey, I guess you're right. Just the same until I'm sure of you. I'm the one who's handling the guns. Oh, and another thing, Phil. Don't forget Diablo. He's going to be watching every move you make. <laughs> Ain't you, fella? <laughs> I'm sorry you don't trust me more than that. Oh, no hard feelings. It's just insurance. Now I'll tell you the rest of my plan. The rest? When they find out that old John has been burned to death in his cabin, his grandson is going to be legal heir to this claim. And it's a rich one, isn't it? You bet it is. But John's grandson hates this country. He wouldn't come back here for all the money in the world. So I'm going to write to him and offer him a price for it. Do you know where to find him? Huh. <laughs> I took care of that when I talked to him in Dawson. I got his address. Then, uh, before we left, you knew just exactly what you were going to do. You had this all planned. Yep. Now maybe you won't be worried about playing along with me. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm a lot smarter than you thought I was. Hey, yes, Steve. Uh, you're a lot smarter than I thought you were. I'll play along. Though it was early morning, darkness still covered the vast stretches of the North Country... As Phil and Steve finished packing supplies in the bags of gold on the dog sled, Steve was careful to watch every move of Phil's, even when the only thing left to do was to start the oil-soaked branches that were stacked against the cabin. You stay with the sled, Phil. Well, I'll touch it off. Aren't you going to put Diablo in harness? I sure I am. He's my lead dog, isn't he? But I'll have time to do it when I come back to the sled. You certainly don't trust me much, do you, Steve? You've watched every move I've made. Oh, you can't blame me for being careful. I guess you're all right, Phil. You wouldn't be fool enough to give up a chance like this. But until we get away from here, I just ain't taking any chances. Watch him, Diablo. It'll take me just a minute or two. Here, Diablo. Here's a piece of meat. Eat it, boy. Now, if I can just... Pin this to the tree with my knife. There. I hope it holds. There she goes. It'll be blazing in a minute. Now, come on. Let's get away. That fire will be roaring in no time. 
Come on, dear. Hey, what's he eating? Why, I had some dried beef in my pocket. I gave him a little piece of it. Oh, so you're trying to make friends with him, eh? Well, it won't do you any good. Diablo's my dog, and he does what I say. Sure he's your dog. I didn't think you'd care if I fed him. Well, don't do it again, Phil. Nobody feeds that dog but me, understand? Sure, Steve. You should have told me. All right, come on, Diablo. Up front. <laughs> we better get out of here before that cabin starts to flame. No human eyes saw the column of smoke that rose from old John Avery's cabin as Phil and Steve sped north into the mountains. It was three days later that Sergeant Preston stopped his dog team in front of the trading post at Kramer's Landing on his regular patrol. Ho, King! Hi, Ho, All right, King, come on in with me. Well, hello there, Sergeant. How are you, Eric? Fine, thanks. You're up here a little early this trip, aren't you? Yes, I came straight up here instead of following my usual patrol. You ain't trailing anybody, are you? You know a man with the name of Steve Randall? Steve Randall? Well, yes, he was around here last summer. You seen him since then? No, I haven't. You after him for something? He came up this way with a young friend of mine, Phil Williams. I didn't know much about Steve. After they left, I made some inquiries. Seems he spent some time in Selkirk before he came to Dawson and was wanted down there for getting into a shooting scrape. <laughs> Not exactly the right kind of a man for this friend of yours to run around with, huh? That's right. Phil told me they were coming up here somewhere. Sod, you haven't seen them. If they were going to do any prospecting around here, they'd have come to you for their supplies. Yep, it's the only trading post for miles around. Mm. Well, hello, Red Eagle. Ah, please, you bring furs to trade. You know Sergeant Preston, don't you? Why, no, I don't think he does. Do you live in the Indian village east of here, Red Eagle? No, we live in Cabin on River. He lives about eight miles from here. Red Eagle is one of the best trappers in the territory. For me, me see cabin on river, all gone from fire. Me see today. A, a, a cabin burned down? Well, whose is it? Old man. Him name John. Him live there a long time. Him burn up in cabin. You saw his body? Huh. Say, that must be old John Avery. Hmm. I don't think you knew him, Sergeant. He lived alone out on the river towards Red Eagle's place. I wonder how it happened. Did you touch anything, Red Eagle? Did you take the body out? No, me not touch. Me look. Then come here. I'll go back with you when you leave. You can show me where it is. Well, I'd be glad to help you bury him, Sergeant, if you want me to go with you. Well, that won't be necessary, thanks, Eric. Red Eagle will help me. He can show me where the cabin is. The cabin of John Avery was almost entirely destroyed, and it wasn't a pleasant task to bury old John. As Sergeant Preston bent over the body, he noticed something that brought a puzzled frown to his face. Just a minute, Red Eagle. Look at John's head. Oh, oh from bullet. John Avery was shot. He didn't burn to death. Man killed him, you think? Yes, I think someone killed him and burned the cabin deliberately. I'm going to have a look around here. Oh, snow cover all track. Them tracks me make when me find cabin burn. Oh, I can see those tracks are fresh, Red Eagle. I'm not accusing you of doing this. And the wind's blown this loose snow over any other tracks that might have been made. Oh, here's something. What? A knife in tree. Yes, yeah, a hunting knife. There's a paper pinned to the tree trunk, but... Well, that looks like... There. You got it loose. Oh, that picture of police on paper. It's a mounted police pamphlet I gave to Phil Williams. My name's on it. A uh, knife go through picture. You mean maybe him want to kill you? No, I don't think so. Phil left us here, hoping someone would report it to the mounted police. What if he wrote a note on it anywhere? Oh, that's something. Looks as if he used burnt wood to write it. Can't make it out. Uh, it must be an M. That word might be M-O-U-N-T. And there's a letter N. Maybe him tell where him go. That's what it is, Red Eagle. This means mountains north. They've gone into the mountains north of here. Ah, there are only one trail through pass. All other trail, not good. Could you show me that trail, Red Eagle? Oh, me not go in mountain. You don't have to come with me, Red Eagle. Just show me the trail. Oh, me. Me show you. Good. Well, bury old John first, and then we'll find that trail. Once I get on it, I'm sure Phil will have it marked some way. Come on, Red Eagle. Phil had to admit that the hideout to which Steve had led him was a perfect one. The seldom-used mountain trail led to a cave high up the slope, 
that overlooked the winding path below. Anyone approaching had to pass directly beneath them and could be easily identified. They had been there three days, but Phil knew that Steve still distrusted him. Uh, uh, I guess you and Diablo better stand watch for a while, Phil. I'm going to have a little sleep. Why don't you let me have a gun, Steve? I'm pretty helpless without one. Why do you need a gun? If you see anyone coming, all you have to do is call me. I'm a better shot than you are. You still don't trust me, do you? Oh, it's not that. I'm just cautious. Our ammunition won't last forever. This one box is all that's left. I can't take any chances on wasting any. But this dog, why does Diablo have to stay with me every minute? He's just helping you, that's all. If anyone comes, Diablo gets their scent before you can even see him. He's watching me, not the trail. I can't even walk as far as that boulder without having him snarl at me. Oh, I don't know why he acts like that. Maybe it's just your imagination. Hmm. Uh, how long do you plan to stay here? Uh, a couple of weeks. By then, it'll be safe to go back to Kramer's Landing and get the news about old John's death. <laughs> yeah, keep this fire going. I'm going to get some sleep. I didn't sleep a wink last night. That was Diablo's fault. He'd start growling every two minutes. <laughs> Seemed to me that you were prowling around a little. That's what bothered him, I think. Growl every time I turned over. <laughs> He'll get used to you after a while. Diablo is always suspicious of everybody. I keep an eye on that trail now. Diablo! <laughs> you keep watch, old boy. <laughs> on guard, fellow. <laughs> it was early the following morning, and Phil was busy folding up the bedroll in the cave when... Suddenly, he heard the voice of Steve at the entrance. Phil! Phil! Yes? <coughs> Bring me that box of bullets. Now, hurry up! <coughs> Quiet, Diablo. What's wrong? I just got one bullet left in this gun. It looks as if we're having a visitor. Someone coming up the trail? Keep your head down. Did you bring the bullets? Here. Here's the box. I'm going to get over behind that rock. I don't think we can be seen up here with the sun shining right into the canyon from the east. It'll blind anyone who tried to look up here. The dog team and one man. <laughs> Quiet, I said Diablo. Hey, look at that big gray lead dog. That looks like... Hey, Phil, that's King. That's Preston. Mounty, you can't shoot him. Steve, you, you can't shoot a Mounty. Get back, Phil. Get away from me. Diablo, watch him. Oh, what's wrong with you? I had good reason for not trusting you. You knew that Mounty was going to follow us. Steve, are you crazy? Why would I want to be caught? I'm not as crazy as you thought I was. Yeah, I was right to watch you. Now, don't move or Diablo will eat you alive. Now, watch him, boy. Stay back there. After I get Preston, I'll take care of you. Now, get this rifle loaded. Tell you what. There's nothing but rocks in this box. Phil, what did you do with the bullets that were in here? What do you mean? That's why you were prowling around last night. You put rocks in here and took the bullets out. Why, you dirty double crossing. Now, watch him, Diablo. Now, don't move, Phil. I'm going to get that Mounty with the one bullet I have left, and I'll tend to you later. Steve, don't shoot him. Preston, look out! <laughs> yeah, it's too late, Phil. I got him. Now start walking down there. He'll have a gun on him and some rifle bullets on the sled, and I'm getting them. It won't do you any good to go down there, Steve. That dog of Preston's won't let you near him. Diablo will take care of King. The Mounty is conscious and can shoot. I'll use you as a screen to get to the sled and get the bullets. Now get along now or I'll bash you over the head with this rifle. Watch him, Diablo. <laughs> Only Phil's cry of warning had saved Sergeant Preston from a fatal wound. The sun shining into his eyes had blinded him, and he didn't see the figure of Steve above him. At the sound of Phil's warning, he dropped to the ground and the bullet from Steve's gun creased his head as he fell. As Steve and Phil approached, the Monty still lay unconscious, his big dog King standing guard beside him. The great dog bared his fangs as the men approached, and Steve stopped uncertainly. Don't try it, Steve. <coughs> you go near that sled, King will get you. Diablo, take care of him. While they're fighting, I'll get the bullets. Sick him, Diablo! As Diablo launched himself at King, King met the attack in midair, and the two animals rolled in the snow with roars of savage fury. It was then that Phil turned on Steve. Though he realized he was no match for the larger man, he knew he had to keep him from the Monty and the sled. Desperately, he grasped him around the waist and held on stubbornly as Steve tried savagely to beat him off. Let go of me! Let go! 
I won't. If you're not going to get to that sled, get up. Oh, bash your fool head in. It was an unequal struggle, and Steve at last broke free, leaving Phil on the ground trying desperately to get to his feet. Steve rushed toward Sergeant Preston. Then the gray shadow of King leaped on his back as Diablo crawled away, thoroughly beaten. Get away! Diablo! Diablo, where are you? Desperately fighting the big dog, King, Steve called to his dog for help as Phil rushed to Sergeant Preston's side. Sergeant Preston, are you all right? Phil, Jules. I, I was afraid Steve had killed you. It's, it's my head. I, I was stunned, I guess. Where's Steve? The King's holding him. I, I threw all Steve's bullets away and Steve was trying to get your gun. My gun? Help me up, Phil. I'll help you. Uh, are you all right? I'm a little dizzy. I'll be all right in a minute. King has, King has Steve pinned to the ground. Take your time. Get this dog off. Help! Did you find the pamphlet I, I pinned to the tree with my knife? Yes, I did, and I found the marks you left for me on the trail. Good work, son. You, you, take this dog away. But I won't give you any trouble. Take him off. All right, King. Come here, fella. Phil has you covered, Steve. Don't try to get away. Come here, boy. Dirty little double-crosser. I should have shot him uh, first. I knew the only way I could hey, get you was to pretend to be part of your dirty plan. Stay right where you are. How's King, Sergeant? He had a tough fight with Diablo. He has a couple of bad cuts on his shoulders. He's bleeding a little, but I think he's all right otherwise. Aren't you, boy? I guess Diablo is the one that needs attention. Where's he? He's over behind that big rock, licking his wounds. Huh? If I ever get a hold of that yellow cur, I'll beat the hide off. You won't get the chance, Steve. I'll take charge of Diablo. You won't need him where you're going. You haven't got anything on me. Oh, yes, I have. You're under arrest for the murder of John Avery. Where's your proof? Phil was part of it all. He was the one who did the killing. My word is as good as his. Why, Never you... Never mind, Phil. Let him rave. For your information, Steve, Phil left a message for me in John Avery's cabin. He'd hardly do that if he were guilty, would he? And I must warn you, anything you say will be used against you. The uh, gold that belonged to John Avery is up on the trail in the cave, Sergeant. Our dogs and sled are up there, too. King and I will take over now, Phil. You better go up and pack the sled, and we'll start back to Kramer's Landing. What about Diablo, Sergeant? You think I ought to shoot him? No, we won't have any trouble with him, now that he knows that King is master. The proper training, Diablo will be a good sled dog. King will bring him back to our dog team when we're ready to leave. And, Sergeant, uh, about that pamphlet you gave me, uh, the mounted policeman? Huh? Is that prop uh, proposition still good, the... Uh, do you still want a new recruit? I certainly do, Phil. Now more than ever. If you can do this much without any training, you'll make a fine money. If I can rid the country of people like Steve, I couldn't ask for anything better. Good. I'll make the arrangements for you, and we get to Dawson. If it hadn't been for this rotten dog, neither one of you would be alive right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess he's right, King, old boy. Thanks to you, this case is closed. The Challenge of the Yukon, a copyrighted feature, is a George W. Trendle production directed by Fred Floriday and written by Mildred Merrill. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. All names and incidents used are fictitious. Listen again next week to another exciting adventure during the days of the gold rush. Fred Foy speaking. This program came to you from Detroit. At last, the singing commercial has come into its own. At least the jingle on David Harding Counter Spy has found a stellar role. Recently, Don McLaughlin, who plays the part of Harding, received an unusual fan letter requesting a recording of the jingle that opens and closes the broadcast. McLaughlin sent the record on its way, but the more he thought about it, the more curious he became. What was the jingle going to be used for? Stepping into his radio sleuthing role, Don checked up on the listener who'd written. Seems he was running dances to raise funds for a new parish house. And in order to provide continuous dance music, uninterrupted even while changing records, he figured the counter-spy jingle would nicely fill the pause. It was catchy, and you could also dance to it. You can hear this tuneful little ditty on every fast-moving story of David Harding Counter-Spy. Don't miss this Sunday's Counter-Spy story.